Hi everyone and welcome to the first basics tutorial on my Patreon. I wanted the basics tutorials to cover everything from your feet to your head and then once we do that, all the different body things, all the different cool things we can do, then I wanted to move on to different styles and how to really embody those. So for the first lesson, we're covering feet, <laughs> as you probably saw in the title. So for feet, what's really important and what you've heard if you've taken any pole class before, is point your toes. Now that might sound simple, you probably know how to do it instinctively, but how to really get a solid toe point. Toe pointing is very important for aerial moves. I just really want to specify that because it can make or break the execution of a move. We want to look beautiful and graceful and we have our legs out to here and if the end of that leg does this, it's not going to look very good. Here's an example. So I'm going to go through different ballet basics and toe pointing basics and different toe pointing exercises for strength as well as flexibility in your point to get that really pressed. All right. Okay, we're going to start with our turnout, which is a ballet basic. So you're going to want to feel like your hips are peeling back and out, and then you're going to want to try and pull that butt down, lift your knees up, and then kind of just place your toes out. So again, you want to pull and really tuck that hip down and then feel like you're pulling up all the way through your leg, especially at your knee. So what that looks like with your toes is when you pull your hips out, tuck yourself in, and then pull up from your knees, you're going to want to feel your whole leg engaging. So your toes are going to want to come up and then you can just gently place them out so you can do other things. Speaking of other things, we're going to go over the foot positions in ballet. This one is first, heels together. You're going to take one foot and then place it out to the side to go into second position. And then you're going to bring that foot back in just below the ball of your foot to go into third position. Then when you move that foot forward, that's fourth. And when you bring it back in above the ball of the foot, that is fifth. Now when in turnout, it may be 180 degrees or it may be more turned in and that's totally fine. So what I'm talking about from the side is super in line with each other or more tucked in like that. How to tell if you are too turned out or not is relatively easy. Once you have fully engaged that leg and tucked yourself under, turned out, try bending a little bit. Your knees should track over your first or second toe. If you are too turned out, you will be off balance, almost falling over, or you may notice that instead of your knees tracking over your toes, they're in between your feet. So what that will cause is the back of your foot to lift up like that. There's no shame in turning in a little bit so your knees go where they are supposed to. So let's get into some angles. This is a regular point. Your ankles and toes are together here. When you turned out, your ankle is still together and your Knees, ankles, and toes are all at the same angle. In a wing, your toes separate a little bit, your ankles are still together, your heels are at, together in the turnout, all the angles are the same. Now a sickle is where we get a little tricky. Your toes are together, and then when you turn out, something weird happens and you can put your heel and your toe together. So what a sickle looks like from the ground is you've twisted your ankle a little bit so your toe turns in like that as opposed to being straight. So it'll have a little bit of a twist in that ankle pushing your toes towards your center. So let's get into why sickles are bad. So when you don't sickle everything goes in the same angle on the same diagonal line like so and then from the front, you can see it's straight out to the camera, right? Now when you sickle, the angles get a little bit messy. So your knee is going one way, your ankle is going another way, and your toes are going another way. It also manages to bring your hip up a little bit. You're way more likely to do that in a sickled position, and it throws your balance way off. 
Cycling can also be dangerous because you're more likely to roll your ankle. Uh, a wing, you're more likely to just place it down. So when you're landing or you're on the ground, it can be really unsafe. As aerialists, we're often upside down. We may not know we're sickling. So how to tell is where you feel the stretch of the point. If you're sickled, you're gonna feel it along the outside of the foot. So swish that toe over to a winged position to feel it on the inside instead. Not only is sickling bad for you, it looks bad. When your foot is in a wing position, your line is extended and lifts up. In a sickle, it goes down and breaks your line. Definitely want to avoid that during performances. Sickling, even for that amount of time, hurt my feet. So if it's not hurting you right now, sickling, it, it probably will soon if you continue to do it, that is. Hopefully not now. So what I wanted to do with you now is teach you a few toe pointing exercises to help you with conditioning as well as a little bit of flexibility to really get that curve in your ankle that you see all the wonderful ballet dancers have. It's me again. I just wanted to talk about what happens when the toe actually extends. You want to be able to push through the ankle. If this is what your foot is doing, you really want to push through. So what that looks like is when you push forward, you push through the ball of your foot and then through your toe. And then when you pull back down, back to the ball and then bring that ankle in as fast as possible. From this side, you will see that it looks like that. Then you really wanna bring that ankle down as soon as possible. Moving on to the exercises, we're gonna do some calf raises in neutral first position. We're gonna do this eight to 10 times keeping in mind that you're going to want to really push through that ankle like this, really moving that forward. Then we are going to repeat this in ballet first position, again, keeping your ankle in mind. Repeat eight to 10 times in neutral second. Remember, keep to eight if you chose eight, keep to 10 if you chose 10. Then you guessed it, ballet second. These are sped up if you're worried you are not doing them fast enough, please take your time. Moving on to a fun one, stay in ballet second, little calf raise up, bend your knees, and then we are going to move into some lowers and raises. So you do this eight times, this one sucks, you will not be perfect at it, and if you are, I am jealous. The next one, you go to the ball of your foot and then press into a little kick eight times, going down to the ball of your foot each time. Do this eight to ten times on both sides. Again, pick eight or ten. This next one is a full toe point. You're just going to go from third or fifth. Place your toe up there, pushing through your ankle. You're going to do this eight to ten times, and then you're going to repeat it on your other foot. You can do that transition in the middle if you want, but it really doesn't matter. This next one sort of combines the last two and it's a full kick point move. So you're gonna repeat this eight to 10 times, obviously on both sides. Again, keeping your ankle in mind. So the last standing one is kicking out to the side from first. You really want to be mindful of your hips during this one. You really want to make sure that you stayed tucked under and that your core is supported and tucked in to really make sure that your leg isn't making your hip move because it can slide up like that. You don't want that. So moving on to our mat, we're going to be kneeling flat footed. We're going to press those knees apart toes together. We're going to press one hand into the side and lift up our knee to get a stretch through our ankle and on our toe. So if you need a little support or you need it to be harder, you can push your leg as needed or you can make yourself more upright. This move is really malleable. It will adjust to you, take less pressure off as needed. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side, just to get a little bit of a stretch. Again, this is stretching, so do it when you're warmed up, even though it feels like it's just your foot. So for the next one, we're going to keep our legs together and our feet flat. We're going to place our hands at our knees, right in line with them. And then we're going to think about a cat throwing up and really push our back to the ceiling. 
we're going to think about lifting through our toes at the same time to bring our knees and our butt up. So cat throwing up, knees and butt up. So what that looks like is this. What you want to think about is not straightening your legs. It's to get a push through your feet. So to keep your thighs near your chest instead of the goal of getting straight legs. That is not the point of the stretch. It's to feel it in your feet. It takes a very long time to get a really nice point unless you're naturally flexible. I am not naturally flexible. I also haven't done a ballet class in so many years. If there was anything related to point that you wish I had covered or you felt needed more information, please let me know so I can address it in a future video. If you feel a lot of cramping in your arch that could be a number of things. You want to make sure that your vitamins are up, especially potassium, calcium, and iron, which are important for those muscle contractions. That is it for today's video. If you liked it, please pass along this Patreon to somebody else you know who wants to learn more about dance or pole. It would be much appreciated. If you really wanted to keep working on it, consider upgrading to a different tier and I can help you more one-on-one -on -one with it.